Sharada again. Um, I'm going to talk about blood pressure today and how to measure it. First, I want to explain what blood pressure is. Blood pressure has two figures. The first is systolic, which is the. Do you think I should be talking to you about this? You're looking at me. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Because I'm being like a blue Peter presenter. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so blood pressure, arterial blood pressure, is uh, the higher and the lower figure. The systolic is the higher figure. And that's the figure when the heart is pushing. Diastolic is when the heart is relaxed. And it's measured in millimetres of mercury, which is the amount of pressure that can support a column of mercury on a particular height. And as a result, it's measured using a SPIG. It's relative to atmospheric. SPIG monometer. I always said I was never going to do that, didn't I? Do you remember? You weren't going to do what? I wasn't going to use the funky trendy names that the young people say. Anyway, um, it's actually measured relative to atmospheric pressure, which is 760 millimetres of mercury, but obviously because we live in an ocean of air, that doesn't show up. But obviously, if you're in space, your blood pressure would be ridiculously high. Right, the safe limits. Basically, you should have, the higher figure should be somewhere between 120 and 80, I think, 90, and the lower figure should be somewhere between 80 and 60. There's this thing called white coat syndrome, which is that people get nervous about having their blood pressure taken and it artificially raises it. The other things are, make sure no, they haven't had caffeine uh, recently and also make sure they haven't had nicotine because that will change the blood pressure. Now how this works is, it actually measures the pressure of this bladder. So the higher the bladder squeezes, uh, the harder the bladder squeezes, the more likely the blood gets to be cut off. But with the lower figure, blood will be squirting through a bit you will hear it, these things called Karotkov sounds, and you pick those up using one of these, like a stethoscope. So the first thing you have to do, and then at the higher figure is completely gone. So the first thing you have to do is to get an arm. Okay, you relax your arm. Thanks. Relax your arm. Okay, right. It wouldn't normally be this close to each other, it's just that the frame of the camera is a bit rubbish. Right, now, I always get this bit wrong by wrapping it around the wrong way. Now, you've got an artery running down your arm, obviously, because otherwise you wouldn't have an arm, because it would have dropped off. You relax your arm. You have to make sure it's sort of fairly tight, so let's tighten like that, make sure it's not being compressed at all. And then you try to pick up the brachial pulse, which is around here, near this tendon here. And... Often you can fake it because you can just pretend you found it and then you stick the uh, stethoscope in because you're going to hear the Karotkov sound anyway. There's also a pulse down here that you can use, um, but that's to do with cutting it off so you can tell when it's gone. And then the next thing you do is you switch your sphygmometer over to there. You tighten this valve here and you pump it up and it does nothing. Interesting. That's because I've got it going the way round. Okay. Scratch that because I've got it wrong. That way around. I can't believe I always do this. It's not very professional, is it? Anyway, that way around. I thought it was old. No, I know. It's because I'm rubbish. It was basically, it's basically because uh, one of my tutors made me nervous about this. The first time I did it, and I've never been able to let go of that. So I never do it quite right because I always second guess myself. So. Thanks for that. Whoever you are, I can't remember your name now. Yes, it's entirely their fault. Nothing to do with you being <laughs> able to let go of things. So. <laughs> oh, I can now. Right. So, first of all, you pretend you can hear and feel the pulse. So we put it on this. The thing is, that's quite wide, so it's quite easy to get it in there. Just to make sure there's no clothes in the way. Um, pump it up. And then two things happen. One is you start to hear the sounds. And the other is that you start seeing mercury bobbing come down. Now you have to go higher than is comfortable because there's a gap on some people. You let it go and you start to hear the sounds. Right, now that was 106 over 72. Yeah, it's pretty good. And the thing about that is, 
you should also hide the mercury column from the person because you can see it bobbing up and down and that can act as a sort of biofeedback thing. So if they know that it does that, it will mess the figures up. And the other thing is you have to have three consecutive readings on different occasions. You can't do it more than once because it makes the arm puffy and then it won't wrap around properly. Um, in order for, to diagnose that somebody has definitely got high blood pressure. And of course there is low blood pressure as well, which people don't make enough of a fuss about, but that can also be very dangerous. I've had it, I'm not sure if I'd... Yeah, it's horrible. So, um, and also there's shock, of course, but there's, there's less serious, more chronic forms of low blood pressure than shock as well. So that's it for today. If you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. If you dislike it, please tell me why, so that I don't continue to make rubbish videos. And I'll see you tomorrow.